Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 24, Lecture 1. Non-surgical periodontal therapy is the control of plaque-induced gingivitis or chronic periodontitis through patient daily self-care measures, periodontal instrumentation, and the use of chemical agents. The objective of non-surgical periodontal therapy is to eliminate inflammatory disease in the periodontium, return the periodontium to health, and maintain health with professional care and daily patient self-care. The philosophy for developing a treatment plan for non-surgical periodontal therapy is that the plan controls or eliminates primary etiologic factors, local risk factors, and systemic factors. The selected procedures should meet the patient's individual needs. General indications for non-surgical periodontal therapy. It is required for patients with plaque-associated gingivitis or chronic periodontitis. Usually, it controls the plaque-induced gingivitis and controls slight to moderate chronic periodontal disease. It usually precedes periodontal surgery in those patients with severe chronic periodontitis. Surgery is indicated for patients with more advanced periodontitis after non-surgical therapy is completed. Non-surgical therapy may minimize the extent of surgery that is needed. Non-surgical periodontal therapy is not the best therapy for aggressive periodontitis. The specific goals of NSPT are to minimize bacterial challenges to the patient, eliminate or control local risk factors for periodontal disease, minimize the impact of systemic risk factors for periodontal disease, and stabilize the attachment level. Reevaluation of the need for periodontal surgery occurs following non-surgical therapy. The reevaluation is done to determine if there is a need for surgical therapy. As the severity of periodontitis increases, it becomes more likely that some periodontal surgery will be needed to bring the disease under control. Instrumentation. The objectives of instrumentation is the physical removal of microorganisms and their byproducts to prevent and treat periodontal infection. Physical removal of bacterial plaque biofilm is the most effective mechanism of control. Subgingival plaque biofilm within pockets cannot be reached with a toothbrush or floss. Therefore, the pockets must be instrumented to disrupt the bacterial colonies. The rationale for instrumentation is to arrest the progression of disease, to induce positive changes in subgingival bacterial flora, to eliminate inflammation in the periodontium, to increase effectiveness of patient self-care, and to prevent recurrence of periodontal disease during periodontal maintenance. Instrument selection. Power instrumentation is the optimum choice over hand instrumentation for periodontal debridement. It's more effective in deplacking tooth surfaces. It's more effective for treatment of furcations. Slim tips reach deeper into the periodontal pockets. Low to medium power settings cause less root surface damage. Water irrigation removes toxins and it reduces instrumentation time. Scaling means instrumentation of the crown and root surfaces. 
Root planing is the intentional removal of cementum believed necessary for the removal of biofilms that were thought to be embedded in the cementum. We now know that biofilms are easily removed from the surface of the cementum. The emerging terminology is periodontal debridement, which means removal or disruption of bacterial plaque biofilm and calculus from the crown and exposed root surfaces. It does not include deliberate removal of the cementum. It limits the extent of instrumentation to that needed to obtain a favorable tissue response. Deplacking means the disruption or removal of subgingival microbial plaque biofilm from cemental surfaces and the pocket space. All dental treatment codes use the American Dental Association insurance coding system. Periodontal debridement is not a recognized ADA procedure name. Note, gross debridement to enable an examination and diagnosis is not the same term as periodontal debridement. Gross debridement is intended for people who have so much calculus buildup that you cannot even do a simple probing or PSR. The endpoint of non-surgical instrumentation is to return the periodontium to a state of soft tissue health and a periodontium that is free of inflammation. Following periodontal instrumentation, there normally is no formation of new alveolar bone, new cementum, or new periodontal ligament. Tissue healing does not occur overnight, and in most cases, it is not possible to assess true tissue response for at least one month after the completion of instrumentation. Tissue responses to instrumentation can include shrinkage of the soft tissue and a shallower pocket depth, readaptation of the tissues to the root, forming a longer junctional epithelium, or there could be little change in the level of soft tissues, resulting in a residual periodontal pocket. This demonstrates shrinkage of the soft tissue resulting in a shallow pocket depth. This demonstrates readaptation of the tissues to the root forming a long junctional epithelium. This image shows that little change in the level of soft tissues has occurred resulting in a residual periodontal pocket. The primary type of healing after periodontal instrumentation is through the formation of a long junctional epithelium. Before instrumentation, this pocket has a probing depth of six millimeters, as seen on the right. Six millimeters. After instrumentation, tissue healing is through the formation of a long junctional epithelium. This results in a probing depth of two millimeters. Note, there is no new formation of bone, cementum, or PDL fibers. However, the junctional epithelium has become larger, thus closing off the opening for bacteria to infect, continue to infect the bone. Reevaluation of non-surgical periodontal therapy is a formal step following non-surgical therapy where one must reassess and compare the results with the initial assessment and then decide on a plan for periodontal maintenance. 
The timing of the reevaluation appointment is usually four to six weeks after completion of periodontal therapy. This allows time for complete t tissue healing after non surgical treatment. The steps in the reevaluation include a status update on their medical history, thorough periodontal assessment, comparing the results to the initial assessment making decisions on the next step in therapy, perhaps additional non-surgical therapy, perhaps periodontal maintenance, possibly even referring to a periodontist for periodontal surgery. Identification of sites that are non-responsive to treatment. Non-responsive sites are areas that show continuing loss of attachment and inflammation in spite of thorough non-surgical therapy. The thoughts to keep in mind are, is the periodontal disease or the periodontitis continuing, recurrent, or refractory? Evaluation includes rechecking for thoroughness of patient self-care. If dental plaque biofilm is discovered subjunctively, the site should be thoroughly deplaqued. The patient should receive additional self-care motivation and training. This would be recurrent disease because the patient has not done everything that they possibly could do despite the fact that the non-surgical therapy was done properly. A recheck for the presence of residuals residual calculus deposits. If the calculus is found, additional periodontal debridement should be performed. If calculus was present initially and was not removed, that means it is continuing disease. So the disease was not stopped originally and has continued. When non-responsive sites are encountered, the dental team should consider that other factors might be contributing to the disease process, such as faulty restorations or systemic disease. The question to ask yourself is, is the disease failing to respond to treatment? Indications for surgical therapy. In plaque-associated gingivitis, surgery is not usually indicated, and neither is it indicated for slight chronic periodontitis. For moderate chronic periodontitis, surgery is sometimes indicated, and for severe chronic periodontitis, surgery is usually indicated. Here are some exceptions. Gingival enlargement may require recontouring in other words, removal of excessively proliferated tissues. Slight chronic periodontitis with severe recession could require surgery to correct the recession, such as grafting. The American Academy of Periodontology has guidelines for when to refer to a periodontist. A level one is the patient who may benefit from co-management with a periodontist, which means that the patient care is shared by the general dental practice and the periodontal specialty practice. Level two are those who would likely benefit from co-management. Level three are those who should be treated by a periodontist. Refer to page 410, tables 24-4 uh, through 24-6 in your textbook for detailed examples. Non-surgical periodontal therapy. Following periodontal instrumentation, there normally is no formation of new alveolar bone, cementum, or PDL. The tissue responses to instrumentation include shrinkage, readaptation, or no change. The primary type of healing after periodontal instrumentation is through the formation of a long junctional epithelium. A plan for periodontal maintenance is developed at the reevaluation appointment. 
non-responsive sites are areas that show continuing loss of attachment and inflammation in spite of thorough non-surgical therapy. Surgery is indicated for severe chronic periodontitis. This